So have you seen that Russia is fining Google and YouTube? Have you seen this? <laughs> I'm sure they'll get right on paying that. Yeah, okay. No, no. So so basically uh YouTube is blocking uh, the Kremlin's sites because of too much Kremlin, pro Kremlin uh propaganda. Well, it's what you would expect from coming from the Kremlin. I'm not sure why you would expect anything else coming well, from the Kremlin, but okay. But but it, that's not even the story. The okay. story is is that they're fining them 20.5 decillion dollars. D D wait, what? <laughs> no, that's not true. That's no, not true. This is absolutely true. It's uh it hold on. It's it's uh 20. So if you want it, 20 decillion is 20 followed by 30 three zeros it's a real thing i'm not it's, i just looked it up it's it's totally true they're basically finding google a google <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's so good no yeah. like vladimir putin is actually turning into dr evil He's, i mean <laughs> because one decillion dollars one decillion dollars <laughs> And now for your listening pleasure, here's Polizzi and Rose covering the week of media, marketing, and digital content news. This old marketing. Take it away, boys. <laughs> Hello, friends. Welcome to This Old Marketing, proudly brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. And I'm Robert Rose, and welcome to episode number 452 for Friday, November 1st, 2024. And with me, as always, is my pal, my colleague, and a guy who definitely didn't try to wrestle a pop fly out of Mookie Betts' glove, Mr. Joe Polizzi. <laughs> I was watching that uh, with my youngest. It was crazy. It was absolutely and crazy. We were just saying, you know, with all due respect to Yankees fans, that's those are Yankees. I mean, that's that's what those are. That's what Yankees fans do. They yeah, absolutely that's do yeah. That. Yankees fan going to Yankees fan. That's for sure. Did you? Yeah. I read an article on it, and the guy says, "I'm I'm there." We like we talked about it. We had a strategy. If that ever happened during the year, because they were season ticket holders there, like, yeah. if that ever happened, I was going to go for <laughs> it. My friend was going to go like. <laughs> Really? You talked about this? You you were gonna yeah, wrestle? That, that's even Mookie worse, Betts. right? That they actually talked about it. And they had a plan, it. right? But you know, and now, I mean, is, you can see it, right? They, I'm sure they came out of Brooklyn or the Bronx or something like that. I was like, look, let me tell you something. This ever happens, I'm gonna grab that guy's glove. You grab his wrist, and we're gonna go. We're gonna. It's gonna hey, be on. It's on. Like it's on. Like Donkey Kong. That guy's living his best life because even <laughs> though he wasn't allowed to go to Game Five. <laughs> which, which wonderfully, the uh, Major League Baseball gave them to two kids that were dealing with cancer. So wonderful. Yeah. That's much, much better. But you yes. know, like he's 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 getting his fifteen minutes of fame. He's loving it. He was doing all the you know all the podcasts and. <laughs> it's yeah. like okay, you're famous <laughs> because you almost took off Mookie Betts's glove hand. That's right. So, and by the yeah. way, congratulations to your Dodgers. Yeah, L.A. Dodgers. There we are, World Series champs. I was very night. happy to see this. Oh, I watched um, it. It was great. It was so much fun to watch to come come down from that fifth inning was amazing when they, you know, when the, they just kept hitting the ball and Yankees kept committing errors. And it was really just unbelievably, you know, to watch them come down, come back from five zero. Never happened before, by the way. Um, come back from five zero to actually win uh the championship. And so, yes, congratulations to my Elliot Dodgers. I uh now <laughs> I'm glad the Dodgers won, but I really didn't want to see it done that way. I mean, that was a horrible because now you're going into, you know, if you're a Yankees fan, you're going in the off season, you got to be feeling worse than ever because they had that game won and they gave it away three different times, three, so, totally. almost three consecutive plays <clears throat> with the error to judge who just took his eye off the ball, the yeah. throw to third base in the dirt. And then for some reason, the pitcher decides not to run to first base. Yeah, right. But it's like, what what was he thinking? Probably like, just was really frustrated because of all the errors that were being, because he was out mm -hmm. there for an extra 20 some pitches and didn't have to be because of the errors That's right. that were being played. And he just was like, oh, okay, Rizzo, you take it. Nope. Right. And then that, that opened it up five runs after that. That I mean, you we wouldn't even have been talking about, the Yankees would have won. We wouldn't have That's been right. talking about any of this if Garrett Cole would have ran to first base, took that throw. 
That's exactly right. That's he yep. He didn't. He decided not to. He didn't. Welcome to being a Dallas Cowboys fan. Yeah, I mean they hey, give I'm it up. Sorry about. Uh, Ooh boy, sorry they stink. about that game. Oh, they stink. They are really, 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 you, really bad. Is it coaching or talent or both? It's both. It's both. You know, I mean, they have. Uh, it, it's the coaching is in. I I have you know, my take on this is that they are the coaching staff is doing as best they can with the talent that they have. And, you know, there's no doubt that there's injuries, but even, even if they had all their stars back, it wouldn't be making much of a difference. It just wouldn't be making a huge difference. I don't think, but because the offense is so bad and the offense, basically all they're missing is Brandon cooks on the outside, but you know, I mean, they have no running game. The Dak is playing awful. You know, it's 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 just bad. And so you you go, okay, well, great coaches figure out a way, right? Great coaches figure out a way. You know, and 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 get their team motivated. The the, you're the only biggest problem four. I have you're not out is, of it at all. You're only a game out. No, yeah, it's only no, we're two games out. But but it's but it's it's but the only the only real issue that I have, and this is sort of you know. I never post on the blogs on the Cowboys blogs, but I did actually post um, after the lions lost, which is they don't seem to care. That's, and they've made me not care. That's the problem I have is, is that there's no emotion on the sideline. There's no, nobody's getting angry. Nobody's throwing helmets. Nobody's, you know, nobody's getting upset. It, you know, I used to have this, I, I used to have this thing. It was a meme that I used to post every, every year when Eli Manning was playing for the giants, I used to call it the sad Manning face. Right which was always a fun thing to see when you saw the Stad Manning face. You know, he had this sort of like, you know, droopy dog sort of hang face. <laughs> I would post it as, as every time the Giants would lose. And Dak has the same thing. Now da there's sad Dak face. And his sad Dak face is on, you know, it, it, it's hard to describe when we're, uh, you know, without actually doing the face. But he's got this thing he does with his jaw where he goes, he just sort of opens up his mouth like, I can't believe that I just did that. You know, it's just, it's a sad Dak face. And that's the state of the Cowboys right now is sad Dak face. My, my wife uh, told me a joke after the game. Uh, she said that uh, Dak Prescott was so upset at the end of the Cowboys game head that he threw down his helmet, but it was intercepted. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. There you go. I've never heard those <laughs> Cowboy jokes before. Never. These are all. They've never, ever. Fresh. Hey, yeah. all I got to say is if they'd have played Jameis Winston first part of the year, we we would probably be better than 500. 100%. Jameis Winston, AFC Player of the Week. We've been talking about it on this program. It's not like other people haven't been saying it either, but we got a new quarterback coming in, and they look like a football team, and they beat the Ravens. They look great. You sent me, yeah, you were watching it. You sent me a text right after. I'm like, yeah, right? It's like yeah. the Greg Brady talisman has been removed it's, and the curse is gone. And now to your point, that sideline, they were, they were buzzing. Yes. They, Happy um, and excited and emotional and they care. It's yeah. interesting. I, I, uh, I listened to, I'm not a huge Nick Saban fan, but man, he, he can really analyze football. Yeah. He was saying, he was talking about Jameis Winston dropping back versus Deshaun Watson. And he was saying Deshaun Watson is almost impossible to block for because he takes generally 12 steps back. And he says, when you take 12 steps back, it's like you, you could be all pro. You can't block that structure around. He said, Jameis Winston takes seven steps back, back foot plants it and releases it fa second fastest in all of football. Yeah. He said, why, why were they so much better quarterback play? It's all quarterback. Yeah. Play. Yep. So anyways, I don't know if it's yeah, we're two man. and six, it might be too late. There are still some people that believe that Jameis can go on a Flacco type run. And I I'm I don't believe for him. It. I'm rooting for him hard. I mean, I'm rooting for him hard because I'm certainly sort of you know I'm just I'm I'm watching I'm I'm uh, <laughs> I'm watching my Cowboys that are in a nonplussed way, right? I'm <laughs> I'm neither I am neither I'm nonplussed. <laughs> I am neither <laughs> overwhelmed or underwhelmed. I'm just whelmed. I'm just whelmed. <laughs> Well, before we get on to the news, yeah. I do want to say I heard great things about your keynote at Content Marketing World. Oh, you're very kind. Uh, you're you very rocked kind. the stage, and yeah. uh, I, ha I, I, even though I couldn't be there, 
unfortunately, my wife and I were in the Bahamas, so we were unfortunately, rough. unfortunately, <laughs> uh, while you were on stage doing your doing your yeah. thing. But I, it was nice enough. I was overwhelmed with the emails and texts from people Aww, saying they missed so nice. me. It was really, it yeah. was really nice because you know, I, you don't know, you don't know if people care, but people, you know, there are a lot of people but that they say, do. We this they, people year do and, care. Yeah, they do so care. There, it was very nice to get all those, and I missed. I had a little bit of FOMO going on while I was going down the water slide and laying in the pool and <laughs> drinking a pina drinking colada a drink and yeah and sitting yeah, in the sun it was, i was like yeah, oh man i rough. wish i would have been at the marketing event <laughs> San instead Diego. of instead yeah. of here in the in the pool in 85 in a, degree weather right. it's in like cold dark by the way, you know room. and i did this and you saw that i did my little review on facebook like i normally do when i go to a place but we did paradise island uh the atlantis uh st string resort of old yep. hotels there just outside nassau and it is a little pricey but wonderful experience oh there's no I mean, such thing as cheap in the bahamas i mean that's just i mean you know it, everything it was is quite an experience i'd been there before like Hawaii. Uh, yeah I'd, I'd been there before to atlantis uh because we were there when we when when pam and i went on our honeymoon in 98 uh, we were on a carnival cruise and they stopped at Nassau and we actually went and spent the day there and checked it out, but I'd never stayed there. And we stayed mm -hmm. there this time for, for a few days and it was fantastic. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, they got the, and they got the, I, so, okay, I'll leave you with this. Cause I, I still don't understand it. They have a dolphin K and there's like 30 dolphins in there and they do, you know, the pet, the dolphin and feed sure, the dolphins yeah. and the whole thing. Well, most of the dolphins, are from the New Orleans area for, uh, and they were rescued during Hurricane Katrina. Oh, wow. How do you know, know yeah. how do you know when a dolphin needs to be asking for a friend? How do you know when a dolphin needs to be rescued? How do you, does it say, does it, does it make <laughs> does it, the noise and say, does it say? <laughs> like, seriously, <laughs> It's in the water. It's obviously now. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was washed up or whatever. But I'm assuming they took it from the waters and moved yeah. it to other waters. I just was like, they're doing a great yeah. job. They rescued the dolphins. But I'm like, maybe did we ask them? Yeah, did we ask? Did, them? did, did, did they want? Maybe to? they were. They maybe they were happy hanging out in Lake Pontchartrain. Yeah, they they yeah, yeah they liked the. I mean, yeah, I mean, they like. It's they got like a good Cajun vibe. Food. New Orleans got a good they, vibe. Cajun yeah. shrimp, you know the whole thing. Yeah, now you're in Bahamas. <laughs> You're having to deal with humans like sticking their hands all over you. It's like, you know, ah, quote unquote and, rescued, you know, rescued from what? <laughs> from what? And and by the way, neither you or I care about Halloween because as we record this, no. it's Halloween and we're yeah. not dressed up. Who cares? Who cares? I'm like more it. concerned about the scary day that's coming up next Tuesday. So uh, yeah, yeah, we already voted. We voted. So did we. Uh, you did your early voting. You did your yeah. job as a citizen. So yeah. Uh, go vote right. folks go vote uh i'll never actually i'll never forget um you and i uh, had a workshop the day after election day in 2016 oh, God. don't even I, remind um, me that was all that was the that was i mean it was hard to do it was hard to work that day it was really really hard to work that day it was hard nobody wanted to be there no it was just like we were all nobody like, wanted to be what there. what was going on content yeah. marketing yeah <laughs> That was pretty much it. That was the whole thing. Remember, I think I'll you got up there and said, I I think you really did get up there and said, you don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. But no, we're doing this right now. Let's go. I'll never forget <laughs> your breakfast coming down and sit down. We were having breakfast together. And you sat down and you went, this is going to be bad. <laughs> this is not going to be good at yeah, all. That's an understatement of the year. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway, we've we have got a, great a fine show. show. We do have a great show. Yeah, we're going to talk. Uh, I'm speaking of politics. We are going to talk a little bit about newspapers, and it, basically, the you know this is a marketing problem. So we are going to talk about it, which is uh, the Washington Post has refused now for the first time ever um, to endorse a candidate for president, and they are seeing subscriber flee uh as a result of it They're, they are not the only ones of course there are other newspapers as well as who have decided that they are going to not uh endorse folks and we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about it and we're also gonna wrap in there there's a new research study that shows how local newspapers are really going extinct so what's going on in the world of newspapers in 2025 and let's talk about that from a marketing and, and communications perspective then 
We'll uh, pay some bills and then we'll get to the folks at Google and Meta and Microsoft who all crushed Jeez. their earnings uh, this week um, and all on the back of AI and advertising spending. So we'll talk a little bit about what that might mean for marketing and advertising coming up in the coming year. Then we'll talk a little bit about TikTok influencers, Joe's favorite platform. Um, and we'll talk about TikTok fame and how it comes with pain. Um, some interesting new research coming from Teen Vogue, uh, who does amazing journalism, speaking of journalism, um, with regard to how uh, TikTokers are actually finding are you a regular, you, you, you regularly read Teen Vogue? I do. I, I find myself, there's, there are, they're, they're, they're <laughs> investigative journalism. I learned something journalism. about you every hundred <laughs> percent. They're what the things that they cover and the way that they cover it is are absolutely stellar. I mean, they're I'm, I'm, they, I, they've got a great color great me impressed. Group. Yeah, this is wonderful. OK, um, yeah, there you go. And then yeah. if we have time, we'll talk about the Vision Pro from Apple. They've done big cutbacks of that while we were away at Content Marketing World in the Bahamas. And we'll talk about what that might mean for new platforms. Then we'll get to our winners and losers, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Nutter Butter uh, on TikTok and what is going on there in their weird world. Oh, my God. Um, this is so true. Joe true. is going to talk about the Strauss helmet in the World Series and their deal, which is just fascinating. Uh, then we'll get to our rants and raves where I'm going to talk a little bit about ghost positions and ghost jobs on LinkedIn as well as other platforms. And Joe is going to talk about the, I guess it's the Bitcoin newsletter has now acquired the Solana newsletter and some consolidation going on in the, I guess, the crypto world of Bitcoin. News hey, and Bitcoin publishing. almost almost at an all time high. Yeah. Who would have figured? You would have uh, figured, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe some yeah. people. Maybe we talked about maybe. it. Maybe. Maybe. I maybe. guess maybe. NF NFTs are next, right? You know, we're going to get all the, all those. It's NFTs going, it's going, they're going to all come back. No, no, oh, okay. no. NFTs yeah. never went away. Oh, yes, they did. Yes, they did. They really, they happily went away. They happily went away. It just, they, it just came down here. It just it was way up here. It just came down here. We're just waiting. We're just, we're just you're waiting. doing this. I need I'm you in. to do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the listeners can't see you. I know. You know the listeners right. can't Unless see you're watching this on YouTube, nobody yeah. knows what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> You're All doing right, more of this. Go. I need you to do more of this. <laughs> Such a good thing. All right. Yeah. Anyway, so we're going to open up with our first story here, which is coming courtesy of Axios. Um, although so many places are covering this right now. And it is all about how the Washington Post has decided, well, what they're going to do about endorsing a candidate and sort of how this plays into the world of Jeff Bezos, who, of course, is the owner of the Washington Post. And it opens up by saying the Washington Post has seen at least 250,000 readers cancel their subscription after owner Jeff Bezos ended a decades long tradition of endorsing presidential candidates, the newspaper reported late on Tuesday. And the figure represents 10% of the 2.5 million subscribers. That's an incredible number, by the way. That's a huge number. The paper number. had before uh, Bezos announced the decision after the Washington Post editorial board had drafted an endorsement of Vice President Harris per the report. While Washington Post has not publicly commented on how many ended subscriptions, the report cited two people familiar with the figures saying that there had been a huge spike in the number of subscribers looking to cancel online from Friday. Uh, from the CEO and publisher, and William Lewis announced the end of presidential endorsements. Um, so that what I mean. What, so let's take that one first. What what do you yeah. make of all this? You wrote a a lengthy piece on Facebook, which I thought was really great um, about journalism and integrity and and all those kinds of things. And I thought it was extremely appropriate. Well, so first off, a, a newspaper a media outlet doesn't have to do an endorsement. It is no. an opinion. It does. It does ring to being bias, but it was it was part of the long term editorial strategy for the Washington Post, the L.A. Times and some of these other ones. But let's just talk about the Post for a little bit. Yeah. So it's part of this long term strategy and they're running forward with their editorial strategy. And you get an owner that comes in and from what's been reported there was no consultation with the other executive members of the editorial team. Some of them have there resigned was, in result of this. Who yeah. resigned or upset. Basically, Bezos came in and said, we're not doing it. Now, he has every right to do this. Yeah, absolutely. And if this was done last year, 
when right. the planning for 2024 was going through and say, what are we going to do? That's the time when you say, you know what? Let's not do it. And you know That's what? Right. Never would have been an issue. That's right. None of this would have happened. They wouldn't have lost 10% of their subscriber base. That's it right. It comes in. It's just interesting, right? So you, you put two and two together. Nobody knows anything. But, oh, the, I didn't see that there were meetings between uh, the 45th president and then Blue Origin or his team and some of Bezos's other. Because from a revenue and profitability standpoint, the Washington Post is probably the smallest thing that Bezos does. But it may be the most influential thing. Yep. So here they are making this decision. It just looks awfully interesting. And I guess if it, you know, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, I think we can all, something was going on there. So when I did my Facebook post, Robert, as you uh, talked about, it, the timing is horrible. And the fact that there was no trust put in the editorial team, no consultation, this is just bad leadership. Horrible, horrible leadership from exactly from traditionally a lead, uh, Bezos, who's been, yeah, I mean, in some circles, a very good leader, growing Amazon from nothing to one of the most uh, influential and and uh, profitable companies now on the planet, especially with AWS. But I just thought this stunk to high heavens. Uh, I wish this wouldn't happen. And what I made in the point for Facebook, I would have wrote the same thing if it was Trump that they were going to endorse. It's the fact that now, obviously, it probably wouldn't have happened that way because we think that there's a fear of repercussion here is why these things were taken. But doesn't matter. Just ter just terrible strategy. So the, the you know, why we're talking about this on a content marketing show is you let your content folks make these decisions. And if the publisher or the CEO or the CMO wants input into that, you get the people that are creating your content make them part of the decision-making process and give everyone enough time to line up the things correctly so it doesn't completely disturb your overall strategy. That's the point. And that's the point that needs to be made over and over and over again. This has nothing to do with politics. Yeah. It, you know, on this show, I ranted, I don't know, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, maybe, you know, a little more than a month ago about how uh, you know, we talked about it with Zoom. We talked about it with uh, Meta. We've talked about it with Adobe. We've talked about it with Microsoft, how they have botched things like new terms of service, right? Where they've said, you know, where they've come out and said, hey, we're having new terms of service about the way we use your data for AI. And in the case of the last one, it was basically, uh, you know, they had already been using it and basically were now sort of saying, hey, by the way, unless you opt out of this and by the way, we've already got your data, you can opt yeah. out of it from the future going forward, which is and, and my complaint and rant at the time was this is legal and marketing and communications not talking to each other, not collaborating with each other, because the timing is what it is. not. It, it's not in what you say. It's how and when you say it. And that communication is just botched. And in today's world, when you see that happen again and again and again, Adobe and Microsoft and Zoom, you hope, you figure this is a big company wearing their, you know, big girl, big boy pants. And they basically should be able to communicate with each other and get this right, coordinate this messaging, this marketing message, this communications message correctly. And they're not. This is the exact same thing. To your point, if they had made this, uh, you know, if the Washington Post had made this decision a year ago, and they may have, by the way, have Bezos may have made this decision a year ago and just it's not communicated it or not yeah. communicated it effectively enough or communicated it in a way that his lieutenants didn't listen, you know, that would have been one thing and it would have never been a story. It, it, it would have been a non-story. Oh, yeah, of course they're not endorsing. They said that they weren't going to endorse back in July of 23. That's fine. That's that's how and when coordinating that messaging doing this now not only shows a capriciousness in the way that they make decisions. It also shows the fact that and, and this is the number one, number one goal of journalism is not to make yourself the story. And they what what did they do? They made themselves the story. Yeah. And so that is the it's like the bad and the bad. So it's just very, to your point, very poor leadership, very poor coordination, very poor content and marketing strategy. And it just reminds us all that what we say and when we say it and how we say it to the public matters.
it totally matters because now they're suffering the consequences of this that they would have never a 10 percent reduction in subscribers by the way not hurting bezos that doesn't hurt bezos at all he doesn't care he doesn't care that 10 percent of his subscribership goes away all that does is kill the great journalists at washington post so it's just a it's just a bad cautionary tale for marketing and communications and that yeah and there were some people that were commenting about the editors and journalists that ended up leaving and making and they and some people were saying oh they're just sour grapes and bezos can do what he wants yeah bezos can do but of course he can but now but now as an employee of the washington post how can you have any faith in the mission You've right. lost faith in the mission because at any moment, the one of the richest people in the world can come in and say, "Yeah, I don't care about your mission anymore. I don't care. I'm gonna do well, it. I'm or, gonna do what I want when I want." I'm like, "Oh, yeah." Jesus, and so, I mean, I talk about this all the time with clients, which is sometimes you just have a capricious, you know, knee jerk CEO right, who does things, inserts themselves into the process at inopportune moments. Mark Benioff is famous for doing this, right? They're in the 11th hour of Dreamforce and he decides, eh, we're gonna talk, we're gonna swing and pivot to AI now. And everybody has to scramble, right? What good companies do, what good operations do, what good leadership does is they know that, right? Apple knew that Steve Jobs was going to insert himself into the design of products into the 11th hour. They just know it. They, he just always did it. So they built that into the process so that they could actually react and create a good strategy around that. And what this just shows is that they, they either didn't were completely surprised. In other words, he'd never opinion, you know, had an, he opinion was always before. hands off. It, it, right, he was always yeah. hands off and then suddenly inserted himself, which of course, to your point, then puts the, the, the employees going, well, okay, is this going to, is this the start of a new thing? Or is this, is this, is this always the way it's going to be? Or was this just a one-off thing? By the way, neither of those is better than the other. If it's just a yeah. one-off thing, it's like, that's ridiculous. And if it's a start of a new thing, like he's going to become more active then it's even, you know, it's, it's, it's just as bad. Or, he always has been sort of hands on behind the scenes and nobody sort of took it seriously. So yeah, and it, I, it's, I, yeah, I saw the, you know, the people that are, you know, you've probably seen it as well on social. People are saying, don't unsubscribe to the Washington post, unsubscribe right. to Amazon prime. Not that I feel that any, I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> what does Bezos care? He's a, no. almost a trillionaire. Like what does it, does it matter to him? I don't know. Right. It's and just, that's just uh, there's I mean, yes, you can uh, you can unsubscribe to Amazon Prime. But I mean, that's just unrealistic. Right. That's just uh, that's not a realistic thing that's going to happen. Right. You're going to punish yourself and not get discounts on shipping and do all the kinds of things that you because you're not going to stop shopping on Amazon. I mean, maybe some people who are really, really upset about this will stop shopping full stop on Amazon. But if you're so upset by this that you're going to stop shopping on Amazon, you are already going to stop shopping on Amazon. You probably don't shop on Amazon. So. I think that's an unrealistic expectation. Unsubscribing from the post is a way to send a message that to other other companies that there are there are implications. So I, I don't agree with the don't subscribe from Washington Post as a as a reaction to this. Yeah. Um, if you if you care about this issue, because it it sends a message. Ten yeah. that was way more ten percent drop and still dropping by the way. Yeah, way more than I thought it would happen. I did. Oh yeah, I, I thought I mean, that there'd be some. Outrage. This is way, I mean, especially on social where it just feeds and everything. Oh my God, the outrage, immediate outrage. And, and in a lot of cases, rightfully so in this case. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, gotcha. All right. Very quickly here. Well, let's play, let's pay some bills and then we'll talk yeah, a little bit about it. And we'll come back and do the yeah. a thoughtful conversation. Okay. Yes. There you go. So, you want to be a marketer? It's easy. You just have to score a ton of leads and figure out a way to turn them all into customers. Plus, manage a dozen channels, write a million blogs, and launch a hundred campaigns all at once. When that's done, simply make your socials go viral and bring in record profits. No sweat. Okay, fine. It's a lot of sweat. But with HubSpot's AI-powered marketing tools, launching benchmark-breaking campaigns is easier than ever. Get started at HubSpot.com marketers.
There are a million podcasts out there, so which one should you follow? Well, why not try My First Million, hosted by Sam Parr and Sean Puri. It's brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. My First Million features famous guests like Alex Hermazi, Sophia Amoruso, and Hassan Minaj sharing their secrets for how they made their first million and how to apply their learnings to capitalize on today's business trends and opportunities. You can find My First Million wherever you follow your favorite podcasts. Did you did you produce that whole thing? The 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 HubSpot ad was they they're now I'm just, I'm very thankful that they're doing it, but they're the HubSpot folks are now offering up pre produced commercial. I put the video to it. Yeah, the audio the audio version is is produced by them. So I took their audio and and then applied their video to it. So oh, you're yeah, I'm like I'm I'm impressed. I'm impressed with you this whole show. I mean, you oh, are just impressing you. me. The things oh, that well, that's, you can do. That, that's 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 really and, nice. and then it makes my life so much easier because I just upload it here. Yeah, and the stream and the podcast, and and the it. podcast ad is all me though. That's all that the podcast for the um, first million is all that was all me. Good. I, I yeah. took a little. I took clips from their. They do a video show as well, so I took clips from their video show. Yeah, you're. Yeah. I mean, you're you're going next next level. I mean, I, you know, I care. People should want to advertise on this show. I care. The- I, they should. They absolutely should. <laughs> they absolutely should. Want yes, to they should. Please, because for the love of care. God. We care about getting the advertising at least contextually right. Yeah. So that, you know, so that people, you know, so that people, it's at least somewhat entertaining. How about that music? The music that came out of, I have to say the, the Sony, um, uh, AI thing for the podcast thing. I was like super pumped for that music. I was like, Oh, this That's is good. And my prompt was like, so lame. My prompt was like, literally I said, give me some yacht rock. <laughs> I said, give, I, just, I just I was trying to get something quick and I was like, give me some yacht rock, and that's what it's they came so, out with. Yeah. It's so yeah, it's it makes it so easy. And we're and again, like we always say, this is the dumbest version of AI you'll ever use. Yeah. And it's not so bad. Not so bad. It's not too bad. All right. Not too bad. Yeah. All right. Let's get to so we were following in the newspaper theme very quickly. We can just cover this um because it's it's fascinating and and definitely a related story. This also coming to us courtesy of Axios via their media trends, which by the way is a great newsletter. Um, if you're if you're into media and stuff like that. Um, and basically this the headline uh is that news deserts uh and digital news counties in 2024. Or news deserts, I should say, not deserts. What the hell am I talking? I was about? no, I was getting hungry. Were you, as were you, you were, yeah. <laughs> like, I want to, I want to. Oh my god, I want a news dessert with with some chocolate news, and news caramel desserts, topping. Yeah. Oh my god, with whipped cream. <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm. See, I was impressing you, and then I just failed. That was my it's, hashtag it's, fail. It's, yeah. What are you All right. So anyway, the, the headline the is: Most U.S. counties right now have little to no local news services. There's a fascinating map of where there are no local news. Um, and basically, the article opens up by saying an uptick in newspaper closures this year is less more than half of the nation's 3,000 counties or 55 million people with just one or no local news sources where they live. The rapid rise of digital local news sites isn't enough to offset the dramatic rate of newspaper closures. Digital news outlets also tend to serve urban and coastal communities, which are less likely to become news desserts or deserts in the way that we need to say. Whichever way you want to go. Yeah, whichever way. Tomato, tomato. As of this year, the U.S. has lost more than one third of its newspapers, 3,300 compared to 2005, a statistics that many uh, projected last year. So fascinating trend here with regard to uh, newspapers. And yeah. we've often talked about the idea that this is the biggest content marketing opportunity that no brand seem to be availing themselves of. But um, what do you make of this? Well, we keep saying it over and over again. And if you are a lo- larger, mid-sized to larger local business, huge opportunity, right? right. You're, you're the you local Jeff Bezos. Yeah, you're the Jeff Bezos of your county or your small town. I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, we talked about um, you know, when cleveland.com and the plain dealer, the paper here in the Cleveland, Ohio area, Northeast Ohio, where they were going under tough times, I thought that like progressive insurance who's headquartered here, who already has their name on the Cleveland guardians stadium yeah, would be like a natural fit for that kind of thing. I do get concerned though, when you have like the, 
what we just talked about with Bezos, where you sure. have somebody coming in with a corporate mission that's different than the editorial mission that they might get but in the way. Every but, news organization on the planet, right? That's now, right. right. But huge opportunity. Um, and it wouldn't be overly difficult to do either no. if you were in whatever county of of California that's that there's no news or Ohio or wherever and you wanted to put together a team and say you know we we're, we're there's nothing available there's a huge content gap there's nothing huge yeah. opportunity to come in there and say well let's put together an editorial team and create this much needed service for yeah. the people of this county city neighborhood town whatever the case is i think it's it's just it's almost seems like a no-brainer but again it's almost like when we talk about acquisitions and marketing it's just there's no awareness that that's a thing that that could right. be a thing well and, and the and, and the funny thing is I've, and, and the reason this sort of evoked such a response from me this week was because in my talk in my workshop now and in in one of my talks where i actually talk about the new trends in in marketing I use the example of up in Santa Barbara, which is north of here where I live, you know, maybe an hour or so. Small town, Santa Barbara. They do have a local newspaper, but it's, you know, it's okay. Um, but they have a guy there who owns a roofing company uh, and it's Jack's Roofing. I mean, literally 100, 100 people and, you know, the largest business for the small area, but it's a roofing company. They just replace roofs and stuff like that. His main marketing arm is a newsletter about the weather and he does hyper local weather. And the thing with Santa Barbara is, is that it's got a lot of microclimates, right? So there's, you know, there's weather up in the mountains, and then there's weather down at the coast and then there's weather in the flatlands. And so all these microclimates and he's known is renowned now for getting the weather exactly right. Like he'll, he'll literally, his email newsletter is basically, Hey everybody, Jack here. Just wanted you to know that today at butterfly beach, you know, one of the local beaches, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be X degrees. And by the way, from noon till 1230, it's going to rain. So you're only going to need your umbrella for this, you know, for those 30 minutes, and then it'll be a beautiful sunny day. And he's right down to the minute. And he's a self-described weather nerd. He totally nerds out on weather. All he need do is add sports and local politi politics. And he's, <laughs> he's got himself he's the local the news newspaper. source. Right. Jack's is, news source. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just think there's a huge opportunity here that I wish more more brands would take take advantage of well you and i've been you know you know i'm i'm working on this and well, we've been working on it forever because basically it's content marketing but it's the idea of the when when people spend more time with our content and we deliver it on a consistent basis as long as it's relevant value valuable yep. uh you will increase trust yeah and increased trust means they stay longer as customers. They buy more stuff. They talk more favorably about your brand. And this is they a spend great more time way with you. Like to you're, do that. You're on yeah, to these days. Yeah, exactly. Just spend more time. And then you can you can figure out what those levers are. It's like, oh, do I want to create longer form content? So the time part of that is longer. Yeah. Or do I want to create more consistency or more uh, frequency in that? So I'm going to send it twice a week instead of you know once yep. a week, whatever. And then you can figure out, oh. That equals this level of trust, which leads to all these wonderful KPIs. It's not rocket science, obviously. It's if not. It was we, we you know, we're marketers, folks. This is yeah. about yeah. as dumbed down as you well, can get. Well, B two B has figured this out, right? B two B has figured this out with magazines and journals, and you know whether it's print magazines or print newsletters or print, you know, or or digital magazines or digital blogs or whatever it is, resource centers. B two B has this figured out for specific niches, right? The a great niche. For a B to C, it would be, you know, local news. Yep. Anyway, all right. So moving on, we have a fantastic story about third quarter earnings. Um, Microsoft, Google, Meta, uh, all ha announced earnings this week, uh, and just absolutely all of them absolutely crushed it. Interestingly enough, a couple of them didn't really have big stock reactions to this, but. Um, all of them, the thing that they have in common and the reason we wanted to talk about it a little bit was because with no exception, Microsoft, Google, and Meta, all of them built on the back of AI, the, the demand for AI, and two, advertising spending, specifically in the case uh, of Meta and Google, which now, fascinatingly, for the first time ever, YouTube passing the $50 billion mark, revenue mark, in subscription and advertising. That's amazing. So just for comparison, folks, Netflix, 
the next biggest, 36 billion. So YouTube is, you know, what, 25%? I'm not doing my math right, but but a lot bigger. New YouTube is the biggest streaming channel right now. Um, and from a revenue perspective and from a subscriber perspective, it's it's absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, yeah I think? mean, I think, that, well, the stocks are down a little bit because the compare, I think the comparables going forward are going to be so difficult because I have, I mean, it almost seems like a broken record. I think we probably last year we said the same thing. Can they get any better? Can these results get any better? Can I think I saw with Microsoft's they were throwing down twenty four billion dollars in income. Right. Yeah, not even revenue income. Right. right. These it's crazy. are. Um, it's almost it, like the the too big to fail, if you will. Where I don't know if they can get broken up, and um, it's interesting where there is a lot of talk, by the way, for. Um, isn't there, I think there's a case against Google right now, about an antitrust case, it's possibly breaking them up. And Mark Cuban came on and he said, he was on some talk show and he said, look it, if you want to find Google, if you want to find Microsoft or whatever, because they're, the com competition isn't what it should be, fine, find them all day long, but don't break them up because he believes that these companies have to move forward and be the leaders in AI or we are going to lose out to China. Yep. That's sort of the, the whole thing. And it's hard to argue with Mark yeah. Cuban on that. No, it's, see that. So it's, I, so, and I think that's, I think actually that's what's going to happen. I think Google's going to be fine. I think you're going to see more cases come against some of these other companies like Microsoft as well again, but then they're going to say, okay, well, here's how you're going to play nicely by giving us a decillion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Decillion dollars. Oh my gosh. I yes. need to look at that. How long the zeros that's so were. Funny. That is Decillion so funny. That's, that's the Kremlin. That's Putin just trolling, is what that is. Um, yeah, I I agree a hundred percent. And and the interesting thing to me is when you look at it, the the stock price, there was even an article. Um, we won't post it up here because it's dated, of course. Um, but there's an article that talks about meta and the reason that the stock price didn't react as well as it did to them crushing their earnings was because of their sort of, you know, caveat, the little asterisk they put under that, which was, by the way, we're going to spend a decillion dollars on AI in the coming quarters. Yeah. So expect like, you know, profitability to, to be where it is. And so people are a little concerned that they're, you know, just spending money like freaks. Um, and so that's why the stock, that's the theory behind why the stock for meta isn't jumping up as much as it did but the point being if you thought for a second that facebook and instagram were declining in any way right that you know how many how many headlines did we see three years ago two years ago five years ago about facebook being the old person network and no it would you know it was dying and yeah. people you know people were leaving in droves and it would die you know it's like no 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 no, no, no. Facebook is doing just fine. Thank you very much. Did you see this? Facebook increased their revenues 19% year over year, but yeah. only increased their costs by 14% during yeah. the same time. Yeah. Oh, that's scary. I mean, uh, where, well, well, that, what that tells you is that they're doing more revenue with less employees. I mean, those well, cutbacks well, have, been, have happened for you know years now. They've been just cutting back and areas. less spend, right? Just let, let, let's yeah. just call it less spend, right? It may not be, you know, it, it is less employees at, at some level, but it's also just less spend. Yes. Um, and in general, and, and I think a lot of that has to do with the abandonment, really, of the metaverse stuff. Um, and I think you're starting to see that they're starting to see sort of the 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 you know the benefits of of tearing that down to its studs. Uh, and although, not, you know, although it, I gotta say, I don't know have you seen the, the ads that are out with the, the meta Ray-Ban glasses. I recently? saw, so I'm at content marketing world. I met the, the AV guy behind the keynote stage, had a pair and he let okay. me, he showed them to me. And so, and yeah, they're so amazing. What, what is it? Um, so the, yeah. the, what I thought was interesting and this is what they, so, um, the, the ad that they show, cause it was, this was on during the world series when we were watching it, uh, there's a woman that's making a pool, uh, a pool shot and has her glasses on and says, OK, what's the what's the highest percentage shot here? Do I go right side or left side? And, you sh and then the A.I. says, well, you should hit it from the right because you'll have more. I'm like, oh, my God. Are you kidding me? So they can yeah, visually that doesn't exist yet to my to my knowledge that that's it that's does exist because I saw it in an ad. 
Oh and yeah, then, so it exists course. because that's always truthful. Yes, yes, <laughs> that, that's always going to be. They say you. They say you can win a decillion dollars as well. Yeah. No, he showed them to me that the the coolest thing about them that I understand exists today is the way that they do. So they have speakers that can you know when the when the glasses are fitted they hit right at your temples, and the speakers for when you listen to music goes right there. And he said. It's amazing. He said, I don't know how it works, but they're like not like little sound. earbuds. There's no earbuds. They just go right. It just goes right into your temples here, the music. So you can hear phone calls and you can hear music through the Ray-Ban glasses. And he said, that's the coolest thing. He said, the second thing is, and he, he took a picture of me while we were backstage. He said, he literally just, you know, he pressed his glasses and then the little light came on because it was dark, like this tiny little light that shine that shone on me. And then he, he said, take a picture. And it took a picture and then he showed me on his phone that the picture that it took, wow. which was really sad because he was like six foot two. And he, I look like a I look like a hobbit when he took my picture. From that you angle. look like a hobbit. I mean, I'm glad I wasn't in the picture. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. That would have been like uh, me with John Cleese. <laughs> yeah, it was really like the perspective that. was not great. The, the lens is a little <laughs> wide angle, so it makes you look like a hobbit. Yeah. Big. Yeah. It's it's crazy. What's I, I'm, I'm really surprised at how quickly they've been able to monetize A.I. Every one of yeah. these companies, how quickly. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. Very quickly here, let's cover the TikTok story. Um, this coming courtesy of Teen Vogue here, um, Joe's favorite platform, TikTok. Uh, and the headline is, for high school age TikTok influencers, online fame can bring real life consequences. Again, the story coming from Teen Vogue, who does amazing journalism. And the article opens up by saying, Part of Morgan McGuire's calculation as she decides where to go to college is what will look good on TikTok. Amazing. That's an, what an amazing opening. She wants to make sure the campus is pretty and that there are fun events like football games to document in bite-sized videos. It's a factor she didn't expect to consider as a high school senior, but now that she has 750,000 followers to think about, it becomes the priority. Welcome to the world of high school TikTok influencer. Added to the regular concerns of a student, things like school deadlines and prom dates and college applications are the worries that come with being TikTok famous. Views, followers, brand deals. Morgan, a senior in high school, first went viral the summer after her sophomore year school for a video about self-tanning her face. From that one-off post, she started studying here the For You page to try and replicate the success of other creators only after blocking everyone she knew from her high school so that they wouldn't watch her efforts to become an influencer. Two years later, her efforts have paid off. So far in 2024, she's made $81,000 from a combination of brand deals and the TikTok creator fund. The article goes on basically saying, talking about this huge trend with teen content creators um, and how it's become, you know, the content creator on TikTok has become sort of the de rigueur for teens and everybody's sort of chasing this. But the article says, starts to come with a lot of downside, a lot of pain, a lot of peer pressure, a lot of, you know, sort of embarrassment uh, and all of that. So I have a feeling I know what you think about this, but well, what do you think about this? I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm torn because years ago when we talked about this potential, we said that this was absolutely happening and going to happen. And how yeah. anyone anywhere can pick a niche and because all you need is a cell phone, smartphone. Yep. Uh, you can publish, build an audience and monetize that audience. So from that standpoint, this is unbelievable. We've never seen anything like this in the history of humankind. Right. On the other side, we two weeks ago, we talked about TikTok's own research that came out and said how harmful using the app, just using it, consuming yeah. it is so uh, horrible for psychological uh, deficiencies and and anxiety and depression and and uh, and just general happiness uh, for using an app like TikTok, and then they double down. TikTok knows this, and then they double down on it. I would imagine that it's got to be a a number of times worse being the creator on a platform like a TikTok, or let's let's throw Instagram in there as well. Anything sure. where it's yeah. immediate uh, feedback that you've got to feed the beast on an ongoing basis, your whole life is out there. I look at these examples on here and I'm like, wow, you're really doing it. You're all becoming entrepreneurs. I'm so proud of you. And on the other half, I'm scared to death for them. Yeah. Well, we talked about I it last week. I don't know what this the, is doing to them. Yeah. Well, we talked about it last week with the guy who fell off the 
bridge because he was making TikTok videos, right? Yeah. I mean, he, you know, the doing ever more crazy stuff in order to get that sweet, sweet karma of clicks to to really get that dopa. At, at, yeah, to get to, uh, you know, there are there are just awful things happening, right? From people pranking people, you know, people hitting people in the street, people doing crazy, you know, storefront things to, you know, messing with cops to, you know, some of it is just, you know, some of it is just awful, just awful yeah. behavior and all of it to create views and clicks because it can be monetized through, through TikTok. Some of it brilliant, some of it funny, some of it totally emotional and wonderful and valuable and educational. And it's balancing. It's so hard to balance those things in a way that creates that opportunity for us to create nice things. You know, it's, I mean, there's that famous saying, you know, it's like, this is why we can't have nice things. Yeah. And this misuse is really, is, 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 is really why. And it, and it just feeds to our baser instincts. And, and I, I don't have any answers for it. It's just, it's, it's a fascinating thing to actually witness. You know, the, the thing now is, is that it's, it's bred into our, uh, our political season as well. I think one of the reasons that we've seen the, you know, the, the Harris campaign do as well as they have, and we'll see if this is successful or not, but they've understood that it's about moments, not, you know, not these long narratives mm -hmm. that it's about creating these viral moments in social media, these short bite moments of, 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 you know, of virality that has people, you know, has people engaged and, it's it's taking away a lot of the depth, right? It's taking away that. So it's great that it works, and it's sad because it takes away a lot of the depth of what might be a more complex issue that can be described in you know fifteen seconds. Well, it's interesting. A really good example that just happened when uh, Tony Hinchcliffe, the comedian, yeah, exactly, said his thing about Puerto Rico at uh, at Tr the Trump's rally. Yep, and how quickly creators, specifically Puerto Rican creators, just went off and everyone knew about it in two seconds. If you're on any yeah. of those platforms, you're like, what happened? Because nobody knew, nobody knew. I mean, I knew Tony Hinchcliffe because I know that he uh, does handles all the comedy kill Tony podcast. He, he uh, that's Joe Rogan's place that he does it from, I think in Austin, yep. the whole thing. Yep. Like, so I'm aware of that, but 99% of the world didn't know who Tony Hinchcliffe no. was. That went viral in two seconds, that moment. Now, what I'm trying to push people to is not to have TikTok or Instagram be your base platform. I'm trying to say, create a show. If it's a video series, that's fine. But separate yourself from the commentary. Don't have, don't have you be so much a part of the story. Um, somebody yeah. asked me that about just buying another brand. Like if I want to buy somebody else's newsletter, one of the recommendations I give is, don't buy somebody's like personal brand newsletter. Have a, a creator that's created something that's called something else, but it's not their personal brand is not necessarily right. tied to it. It's just better business and long term. I don't think you're going to have the consequences of what some of the negative things we're seeing with this. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's going to be it's going to be an interesting year ahead. That's for sure. That is for sure. Yeah. Um, all, right. all right. Very quickly here. Let's get to we're, cause we're running short on time, but let's definitely get to our winners and losers here where Joe and I pick a winner uh, from the last week in marketing and a loser in the last week of marketing. Um, do you want to go quickly first? I've got two very quick ones, a winner and a loser, um, but you've got a great winner. Yeah. Um, so this is I'm gonna put this up here real quick so you can see it. But this is uh, Strauss, which is the European Equipment manufacturer and they did something that hadn't been done um ever in major league baseball is they sponsored the batting helmet and i i noticed it right away robert i mean i've been obviously with the cleveland guardians in the playoffs i know mm -hmm. i'm like oh my god what is strauss i was like oh is it levi strauss is it something like, what is going on and well i figured out it's this equipment manufacturer so it makes perfect sense for them to sponsor the helmet they actually offer helmets as part of their uh, equipment that they give to to mostly other businesses but it is a sponsorship that's never been done before it's a three-year deal that the major league baseball did with um strauss and it covers all the postseason for for this postseason and then the next two and then any 
Uh, I think any of the baseball games that are played in Europe, they'll do the same thing for those games. So they're trying to spread it out almost kind of like a NFL yeah. uh, deal where they're going into Europe and they're trying some new things. But the reason why I thought this was so amazing is, is that somebody from Strauss had to go in and say, I got a new idea. I'd yeah. like to do something a little bit differently yeah. with a sponsor. And that what mostly happens when you do these kinds of things, like here's what we have available. Here's yeah. all the, yeah. here's all the advertising space and sponsorship space that we can give you. And somebody said, this really makes the most sense with our brand. Can you do this? And kudos to MLB for I know a lot of people are upset because the purists are like, oh, you can't put anything on the helmet. I think it's the greatest <laughs> buy <laughs> ever. Right. Cause yeah. I think it cost them something like $15 million or something to do the whole playoffs. And you see it everywhere. You, every clip you see it on, cause they're all running around, <laughs> hit a home run. There's the helmet, right. everything. Freeman hits a home run helmet. Uh, kudos to, to everybody that worked out that deal. Unbelievable. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, I have a loser and a winner. Um, oh, I'm going right. to only mention the loser very quickly here, which is uh, my Dallas Cowboys. Um, and, and, <laughs> And let me explain why. So the every year for the past few years, either ESPN or Nickelodeon or somebody has done, or Fox in this particular case, has done uh, a animated version of a football game. And they've picked a football game to go with. And so basically this year, uh, they picked the Cowboys-Bengals um, at game, which is going to be on December 9th. And basically, the, as the game progresses, what you'll see is that there'll be a simultaneous cast of, and in this case, it's the Simpsons. So they're going to do Homer versus uh, Bart, and basically, and it's and it's fun and it's interesting and it gets kids involved and they can watch the animated version of the game or even adults can watch the animated version of the game, and, and it's and it's a fun thing. However, they knew this from the beginning of the season, and. The Cowboys right now, the just let they suck. And the Bengals right now also pretty much suck. So this game normally would have been flexed out of any primetime spot, but it's a Monday night football game, so they're not going to yeah. flex it out of Monday night probably. But 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 the point is, is that they could and should have flexed this out because it's, I'm sure at the beginning of the season they went, it's the Cowboys and the Bengals. I mean, the Bengals went to the playoffs last year. The Cowboys went to the playoffs last year. I mean, it was it was I'm sure it was seen as a big win. And when it happened, it's like, now nah, this is just going to be a big loser. So the, I think the NFL f fell flat here, and, and the, I think it's going to be a silly, <laughs> silly thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, very quickly, my winner um, is Nutter Butter, on, and I know it's on TikTok, oh. and I know you don't like TikTok, but it is Nutter Butter is absolutely crushing it right now. But they're crushing it in the most weird, deviant, and, and just strange way. So. Actually, you, play maybe 10 seconds. Of so the, you sent of this, this to me. Yeah, I loaded yeah. it up. Let, I'll play yeah. a few seconds of this. So yeah. uh, so apologies for those people that can't see this. Go ahead. What's wrong, sweetheart? Nice. Air. Dance. No. Yeah, what, what? that's enough what? of that. What if I mean, and by the way, that's a that's a two and a half minute ad. Yeah, that it's is a, uh, it's I don't one even of know many. what I'm watching and, and one of many. I mean, and for those of you who aren't on video, basically the visuals is our nutter butter sort of in the midst of a crazy sort of staticky screen with sort of text coming in and i mean it looks like a picasso painting on acid i mean it is like it, it it's so weird so deviant and i love it so much i love it so much there are tons of creators on uh on tiktok that are going basically i don't know what you're doing but you've got to get over to the nutter butter site to go watch this weird video because we some there's something crazy going on there something and it, it's getting so much virality 87 million followers they've gotten 87 million followers out of this campaign and the success is crazy the new york times is covering it mainstream media is covering it it is absolutely a huge win for the small little cookie brand called nutter butter it's just absolutely and i love it because it's swing for the fence is weird it's so different 
So, and, and I don't get it. I mean, but I'm not the target market, but yeah. I, it's, it's, it's so good. It's so good. I just had this. It's my big winner for the yeah, week. Yeah. It's almost mesmerizing where you're like, okay, I want to keep watching it. Cause maybe I'll figure out what it is. And then That's you got to right. watch it again. Cause I think I missed something. It's freaky. Yeah. And another right, reason why I don't want to be on TikTok. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, and by the way, if you're not on TikTok, you can actually, if if you uh, YouTube search it, you'll find it on YouTube. As and we'll, well put so it in the show notes on the YouTube. And we'll put it in the show yeah. notes, of course. Okay. So let's get to our rants and raves where Joe and I go off on a little bit of a rant or a little bit of a rave over something that makes us feel like uh, a Yankee fan right about now or something that makes us feel oh. a little bit like a Dodger fan right about now. Um, I and can't so if you're a Yankee would you like right me now, to go well. first or would you like to go first? I'll go real quick. Mine's a real quick one. Uh, I've known Richard Patey for a long time. He basically, he's been in the metaverse space. He's, he's done a lot of technology newsletters. He created a newsletter called This Week in Solana, one of his many newsletters, and then just sold it to um, a Bitcoin breakdown newsletter. Not a big deal, just another, you know, it seems like Richard does this. He'll create a newsletter from scratch. He'll build an audience, get everything set up, the editorial vision, and then sell this thing off. And the reason why I bring this up is because a lot of these things are out there. And I'm just telling marketers that before you go and launch the next big thing, take two seconds and look at what's yeah. available in your industry. That's pretty close. Like this week in Solana, you know, it's, it's tangential, uh, not straight on the, on the nail with, uh, or the head of the nail with, with Bitcoin, but it made enough sense for those two to combine. Um, and I think a lot of those opportunities are out there. So it's interesting how it seems like every week now, Robert, we're seeing more and more of these kinds of deals where another media company or another creator will buy somebody else's vision. And, and this happens all the time. Creators are like, oh, I built this thing. I don't want to keep on running it. Do you want it? And There's it's not riches in the niches, riches right. in the niches. There's the decillion dollars in the niches. A decillion. I would love that. How, what did you make for you sold your business? I got about a decillion. I made 20 decillion dollars. I got a decillion and one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got this week? Um, I got ghost jobs. Um, fascinating article in The Guardian. Um, really just a, a great article that sort of because right now and 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 I only know this because I'm hearing from so many of my colleagues out there that are looking for jobs in marketing um and just seeing it on LinkedIn as well as the fact that you know there are fractional jobs that are posted out there that I actually apply to uh, on occasion and somebody said this this statistic here that the article speaks to is that up to 40% of the job postings that are out there are just like they're ghost jobs and they don't they don't exist. And you see people complaining about this all of the time. And there are a number of things that I've personally gone through on this where the job doesn't exist or more commonly where the job is basically a hidden marketing message in order to drive a subscribership to an email newsletter or to drive some sort of wow. uh, engagement with the company, which is just absolutely awful. Um, and I've thought uh, on occasion to call some of these folks out, like, you know, you, you'll see a job post that'll say, you know, marketing VP or marketing manager needed. And then hidden in the thing is like, this is a commission only, uh, you know, job that basically if you sell our software, you'll get, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, and then, you know, it's, and then it shows the job responsibilities. But then, you know, on the salary range, it says, you know, $100,000 or whatever, because that's theoretically what you could make if in commissions if you just sell their software. So it's all about getting you to sign up for some things. And LinkedIn has some guardrails on that, but they're not nearly good enough. Um, and then some of the jobs just don't exist. And, and this Guardian article does a really nice job of going through why one companies are actually doing this. And some of the reasons that they sort of posit are, one, it basically sends a message to existing employees that you're replaceable, which is awful, but I absolutely believe that to be true. Two, it actually sends a message to the market that we're hiring and we're growing and we're doing great, um, which I also believe is probably the primary reason. It's basically to show that we're doing amazingly well and it's just a very easy to do marketing um, type of, uh, of thing to, you know, to get some reach, to get some reach to their brand, to get some reach to their and, and have people you know, engage with the brand. And others include things like you know, having people uh, you know, they're, they're going to be thinking about hiring. So they're trying to build a, a treasure trove of, of resumes. All of them are awful. 
Uh, all of those reasons are absolutely yeah. awful and just and horrible. And my message to those brands that are doing this is just stop doing this because this is just it's 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 incredibly hurtful and it's incredibly frustrating for uh, employees and 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 workers that are trying in their best way to actually uh, to actually apply for something that is real. And it's just something to call attention to. And this Guardian article does a really nice job of it. So just to, I guess I did not. Thing before you sent this to me, I did not know that. I had no idea that that was a thing. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how much how many of those jobs are are, are, are just not wrong with fake. people. Yeah. <laughs> what's this wrong is why with we this can't world? have nice things. This why is we why can't we can't have, have nice things. things. That's exactly yeah. Coming up on election. Yeah. That's why we can't have nice things. Yeah. So, there you go. All right. Anyways. What do we got? Uh, what do you got this week? You you're back to work. Well, I mean, whatever work means for Joe Pulitzer. Oh no! I, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I work. I got yeah. things going on. No, we got a. Okay. We we're going to see the Cavaliers. Our Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team is off to a five and zero start. Yeah, we're very excited. Uh, we're gonna go. We're taking going with some friends on Friday and watch. And I'll be at the Browns Chargers game on Sunday with a renewed vigor Ooh, over my there Browns. Go. Oh, the Browns can beat the Chargers for sure. Well, they're gonna have to because they've got to pretty much win out. I mean, they, yeah. they they maybe could lose two games the rest of the way, but I think that's it. Maybe they can finish Amari nine Cooper. and eight. That's yeah. it. So, I mean, you lost so. Amari Cooper, but other than that, you know, it, well, you still now, got a good team. Amari's probably sad that he's gone because now you got I, a I know. They can throw I know. him the ball. Yeah. So, anyway, what do you got going on? Uh, work, 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 work. Um, starting some new client stuff uh, this week and next week. Yay. Some new clients uh, kickoff meetings, and other than that, um, getting ready for the holidays and. Watching with bemusement and whelmed uh, my Cowboys that play this weekend, and we'll see we'll see what happens with them. I think you're going to have Atlanta a win. Falcons. Who do you who do you play? Is that Atlanta the Falcons? One? Atlanta. Oh, God. oh yeah. Atlanta's good. Yeah, they're they're playing well. They're they're, they're playing good. well. They can be beat. They're but they they're playing very well. So, I Let's mean, I'll normally be, I would have chalked this up to a win, but who knows this? You know, who knows which Cowboys will show up? You never know. So, yeah. hopefully, Dak maybe just Dak just hands off the ball. Yeah, Maybe that's what there you did. go. Just well, they, they they had anybody to hand it off to anyway. I'll get off on a rant. Okay. Emmett, yeah, Emmett. Right? Yeah. I wish it was Emmett. Smith. <laughs> I wish it was Emmett. Smith. <laughs> hey, he's in that commercial. He said he's still suited up. <laughs> I think it's time. Bring him back. There you go. Hand it off to Mike McCarthy. Okay, thank you all very much for for joining uh, this week. Uh, we will be back next week with another wonderful show, and yeah. Until we see you next week, remember it's your story to tell. Tell it well. We'll see you next week on This Old Marketing. Hey, thanks a lot for making it this far in this week's episode. And thank you all for being a part of This Old Marketing. You can check out all the show notes of what we talked about today at thisoldmarketing.com. And it's also where you can leave us a review or a voicemail. We need those reviews and comments on whichever platform you follow us on. And if you haven't followed the podcast, please go do that and make sure you catch the latest and greatest episodes every Friday morning. We're on Apple and Spotify and all your other favorite podcatchers, of course. But we'd love it if you went over and subscribed to us on YouTube. That's right, YouTube youtube.com slash at this old market we'll see you again next week folks with another episode of this old marketing